next video, we're discussing model assumptions for the linear regression model that we discussed in the earlier videos. I took this drawing from a textbook, actually, because uh, it's very good at conveying most of the assumptions that are um, underlying the model. So we can kind of capture it all with a visual representation, and I think it sinks in better when you see a picture. So let's talk about what this uh, drawing is showing. First of all, of course, the line here that's being represented is actually the model that we're dealing with. It's the regression model in abstract form, right? This is the expected value of y, or the average value of y. Then, of course, you have the standard formula for the equation, the y-intercept and the slope beta naught and beta 1, right? Okay, now, from there, what you see is you see uh, little points on the number line. These are arbitrarily chosen um, at x equals 6, x equals 12, and x equals 18, right? Now, you know that if you have the x-axis down here and you say x equals 6, your line predicts that that's the average value for y. So this is representing, that dot is representing the expected value of y when x is 6, right? So if you use 6 in the model, you're going to get that result from the equation. And that's your expected value of y when x is actually 6, right? All right, now from there, what you see here is you see a representation of the distribution of the error terms. So remember what the error is, right? The error is the difference between the observed value and the predicted value, right? So this is your predicted value, the number on the number line, and then you might have an observed value that's above or below that in some place. What this bell curve is representing is the distribution of those error terms. So essentially, first thing you want to notice is that the mean of the probability distribution of the error term is given by that location right there, which is the spot on our regression line, right? And if you think about that, if you had an observed value that was there, and you subtracted off the error term, I mean, subtracted off, sorry, the predicted term, you would get zero there, which is basically what it's saying then is that the average, um, the mean for the probability distribution of your error term is essentially zero. Because, of course, you know, the observed value minus the predicted value of that location would be zero. So if that's the average location of the error term, then that means the mean is zero. So you basically fill this in to say zero is equal to the mean of the probability distribution of the error term. So that's really nice. It means the error terms, they all have a mean of zero. And the other thing about it, of course, is that you can see that it has a bell-shaped distribution, which means that most of your error is going to be around here. But that means that most of your observed values are going to be a little bit above or below your predicted value, right? So in other words, you're not going to expect that you get um, a predict an observed value way up here, right? Because the probability of that would be exceedingly small. In fact, even out to here, it's going to be very unlikely once you pass that point, right? So essentially what we can do at this point is say, well, hey, you know, if this marks like the um, two standard deviations above, two standard deviations below on the, then we're saying 95% of the observed values would be within this span, right? Which means you could actually say, geez, you know, I can figure out how far I'm likely to see an observed value from our predicted value. And that's really handy to have. That difference or that distance, you know, could be measured in standard deviations. So you could say that's one sigma, that's two sigmas. And what we're going to notice is that each of these bell curves that are represented here, I've tried to draw them as best I could to be the same size. And that means that there's a constant standard deviation for the error term. In other words, the variance for the error term or the standard deviation for the error term is constant no matter where you are on the x-axis, right? So no matter where you make it, you make a prediction. So let's say you say, I want to know what happens when x is 4. Well, when x is 4, that'd be back here. You have your um, expected value there. And then, of course, you have another one of these bell curves, right? So that the observed values would sometimes be above, sometimes be below that point, right? So an actual value in the real world is probably not going to be precisely on the line, right? But it might be a little bit above, a little bit below, et cetera. But again, it'll have the same bell-shaped curve. It'll have a constant standard deviation. So you know that the probability that you get you know, way above that or way below that is going to be very small because we'll have this bell-shaped distribution. So depending on how large this standard deviation is, you'll be able to figure out how far away you're likely to observe actual values in the real world compared to your actual predicted value. OK, so again, you see that all the way throughout. So let's kind of, again, just recap overall what we see from this drawing. We see that the mean for the error terms is zero. Its probability distribution is bell-shaped. We see that it has a constant variance, no matter what the x predicted value is you're looking at, right? So that you don't see a different bell curve when x is 20. You see the same bell curve there for the error term, right? And 
there's a constant standard deviation of variance for those error terms. They have a bell-shaped distribution, and they're centered at zero. That's the error term, basically. So on average, the error is zero, which we kind of knew from this. That's why we're going to drop off the error term in our model. Remember, when we first expressed the model, we didn't have expected value of y. We had y equals to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus the error term. When you take the average, the error term drops out because its average value is zero. Okay, so that's basically what's conveyed here. The only thing that isn't conveyed here is the notion of um, independence of the error terms. It's kind of hard to see that from the drawing, but um, there's an assumption that you were speaking, spoken about in your class that each individual error term is independent of another error term for a particular uh, predicted value of x. Okay, so that's essentially it. That's what we see from the drawing that conveys kind of the model assumptions. So the most important thing, again, is to take from it that the distribution of the error terms is bell-shaped, it has a mean of zero, and it has a constant variance. No matter what the x is, the variance doesn't change.